So back in 2017, we tried to rethink how do we do our micro business and ultra micro. So back in 2017, we started the journey. We found out that the essential advantage of this bank is its own massive amount of data. So back in 2017, we started to erect a contextual risk management big data. We focus on three things. One is the uh, credit scoring services. Second part is the uh, fraud detection services. And the third one is merchant assessment services. So back in 2018, we've completely developed and publish it on our productions, the whole trees. And back in 2018, we were the first bank and institutions in Indonesia who owned ISO 27001. That's the highest of information security management on big data organizations in Indonesia. Back in 2017, uh, we've already established one of the largest virtual private clouds in Indonesia. We've been using OpenStack though. So, uh, our operation is already running on top of virtual private clouds, no longer bare metals. And our big data, some of them already running on this virtual private clouds, some of them running on top of bare metals, of course. But back in 2018, we've started the journey of using public cloud for the CI CD, the development, the continuous integration, continuous deployment. So some of the development parts We've already been running on top of public cloud. But when it comes to the productions, all goes to on-premise using virtual private cloud. So, you know, when, when you want to do a small scale POC stuff, I think it's much, 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 much better for any organizations. Small, medium enterprise need to be able to do POC very quickly using whatever public clouds available in, in the world, I think. So it's a good move and it's much better, I think, compared to on-premise businesses. Back in 2017, we've decided that data is our essential advantage. It's our unfair advantage compared with other competitors of us. So back in 2017, we've started the journey of creating three things. One is the best credit scoring services in ASEAN, the best fraud detection services in ASEAN, and the third one is the best merchant assessment service in ASEAN. Why, why ASEAN? Because, you know, 48% populations of ASEAN lives in Indonesia. So if you couldn't make the best of all three, I think it's a shame on us. So that's why we're able to pull that off. Back in 2018, uh, our fraud detections are able to detect anomaly in real time and block and disable uh, cards of ours, of our customers instantly and in re in real time. But also on the merchant assessment services, we're able to ramp up our sales of branchless agents. We call it by the name of Agent Brilink. Back in 2017, the sales is around about 15 billion US dollar. But back in 2018, the sales amp up 2.5x. So back in 2018, we've started to think, how do we do our micro business in a different ways? Meaning back before 2017, the way our micro lending works was using, of course, a human approach by using our salesmen on the ground. It took about two weeks from loan originations to loan disbursements. But starting 2017, we've started to digitize in all this process. We launched what apps by call uh, Brispot. So with this help of apps, the account officers or the loaned officers only took about two days from loan originations to loan disbursements. But back in 2018, we said, hey, let's go 100x from two weeks to two minutes. Can we do it? And fortunately, we're the only bank that able to pull this off back in 2018 and given the license by the OJK, the regulatory in Indonesia, from loan originations to loan disbursements in less than two minutes. Digital verifications, digital scoring, digital signatures, money dispersed in less than two minutes. So these are able to become very instant because lots of combinations, but one of them, the fundamental is the big data. We've been using machine learning to do instant scoring of our customers though. And until now, the sales is exponential. 
NPL, still zero. Number one is you need to constantly learn, meaning you don't have to depend 100% on system integrators or vendors. So you need to deeply root your knowledge to your data scientists, data engineers, data ops. You need to make them really, really solid, meaning send them to training, got certifications. All of my teams were MIT's graduate though, certified by MIT, by Harvard, Oxford, NYU though. So that's how we do and make the pace because if you keep depending on system integrators to do your homework, then you're missing the ground. So that's the biggest lesson learned that we had though. That's also one of the fundamentals that why we are able to pull this off in less than I think less than a year, we were able to do this stuff perfectly. So at BRI, we always start with the grand why. We always with the why, and then the what, and then the how though. So you need to really find what is the biggest problems that we need to be able to solve though. Not the solutions first, but we choose what is our real problems. So that's why we call it the grand why. In our bank, we are the largest microfinancial institutions in the world. So we always focus on how do we go deeper, go smaller, and what we call it, go faster, I think. So back in 2017, lots of fintech saying banks is slow, expensive, not safe. But back in 2018, we flipped that, 360, maybe 180 though. So with the launch of our product by the name of Pinang, it's, an, it's a fruit name though, that's our full digital lending. We become the fastest in Indonesia, the cheapest, meaning the interest rate is the lowest against any other, anybody else. And of course, we are the uh, household brand's names in Indonesia of financial lending. So it's much more savers. Back in 2017, the sales of our agent's banking by the name of Agent Brilink, that's the branchless agents, it's roughly around about 15 billion US dollars. So back in 2018, we've applied a big data on our agent banking. So we've come up with a solution. We work with, together with uh, one of the largest map in the world. And also, we've run a massive amount of scrapping Indonesian data, wet markets, in Indonesia and then tic-tac-toe with some algorithm finding the nearest distance between our office and the nearest agents and converting our own customer to become agent Brilink. The sales ramping up 2.5x, it becomes 36 billion US dollars. So afterwards, I mean, whatever you ask for the board, you will allow it because you've already proved to the board that hey, there's money in there. We put the money on the tables and we deliver. Start with the grand why. What is your real purpose? And find the really, really, I must say, you need to able to monetize these projects because that's your green lights. If you're able to pull this off and then the whole nine yards of your pipelines will be able to be, you know, licensed by the board, I think. Unless you finish and completely solve that first project, first problems, well, hopefully that makes 36 billion US dollar, then everything will be granted, I think.